Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to have a go at making a bio battery or mud battery. Um, loads of information online about these. They're fairly simple to construct and they use some um, low grade, low tech materials, which is why I'm opting to have a little look up here in the mountains. So you need two electrodes, some mud and some fuel, which is actually sugar. We have some sugar. And what is happening is in the mud is a lot of anaerobic microbes which convert sugars into electrons and protons. Um, so you need a current collector and a current emitter and a tank. So we've got a tank to put it all in. Um, everyone else is using carbon fiber and graphite sheet and that kind of stuff. Don't have that up here. What we do have is stainless steel mesh, which would probably work quite nicely on its own. And we have charcoal. So I've ground up some standard charcoal. Could do with some biochar or activated charcoal, but that will come later. So essentially what's happening is as the microbes that live in the bottom of the mud uh, break down the sugars, they release the energy and you want to capture that. So key parts here is anaerobic and aerobic respiration of bacteria. In the bottom of the tank, and I'm using uh, river mud dug from the bottom of the river, you have your anaerobic layer and then you have your upper electrode and above that you then have water which you need to get some oxygen into and this sets up your your battery have a look around and look at a load of other videos about mud batteries you'll get all the, the basic sciences or i'll make another one later um, things that are going to relate to how much power you output is surface area of your electrodes and the amount of microbes available uh, the mineral content of the mud and the water that you're using, the amount of sugars available to them, and the amount of oxygen available. So, like most people, I'm going to feed mine with some glucose, with some sugar. I've also, in here, there are some pond plants. So what you really want is plants living on the surface of the water, picking up sunlight, picking up carbon dioxide, and producing sugars. And what, until quite recently, has been unknown is that plants don't actually use most of their sugar. They dump most of it into the ground, to feed the microbes and the mycelia that are down there. So what we're going to do is fill this little pocket with carbon and make ourselves a nice big wadge area full of sugar that the microbes can live in and plant that on the bottom of our tank. Well that bit was easy enough. I've now got all my carbon and sugars in there so i'm just going to pop it in the bottom of this tank we might as well have all of that in there as well okay right high surface area carbon electrode now what i'm thinking is that the microbes in the mud will actually go and live in my electrodes so instead of having this wafer thin little thing i've actually got a whole mass where they should be quite happy living so then i can pop my mud in there and on a lot of a lot of the videos that you can find online they're talking about having an electrical separator now these are plastic bags biodegradable plastic bags that they use over here now because africa has actually banned uh, standard carrier bags and i'm wondering if they might make quite a good separator when i get them in the mud so let's have a little route around in here get some mud in there, lay a separator in, and then I'll make another electrode and drop it on the top. There you go. A load of soil and some mud in there, a little drop of water just to set it all down. Let the air come out of it. Okay, so now our anaerobic bacteria should start to be settling away in the bottom and feeding on the, on the sugars down there and doing their thing. So a little bit like brewing process, actually. I would guess this takes two or three days to get itself going. Um, so next, I'm going to take some more of my mesh and make another pocket to put on the top. And I'm going to query with myself as to whether or not I want to put this separator layer in there. Um, apparently, you do need to separate the electrodes, otherwise they're just short out inside. Um, not entirely sure yet. We'll try one way and then we'll try a few other things and we'll see what we start to get. Well, I've been having a little play. And uh, what we have here, if I connect one 
probe on there. And one probe on there. We'll have a look at this. We have 85 millivolts, 86 millivolts. So practically nothing at all there. And I've just got another electrode just lying on the top of the mud. I put this in as a separator, did exactly the same thing. So that obviously doesn't do anything. But the really cool bit, if you leave one of them on there and come onto the water, I've got half a volt there. Okay. Let's just put the negative electro back in there for a second. So they're not in the minus voltages. There we go, that'll do. Take this out of the way. Right. Get rid of that. Now, if we just come into the water, we get half a volt. And climbing. So one electrode in the muck in the bottom of the pond is giving me 0.6 and rising. That's quite amazing. All right, I'm going to push that into the mud and see what happens if I actually hit the mud layer. Push it into the mud. Okay, half a volt and falling. Leave it in the water layer. Oh, just in the watery bit. Right, I've just balanced the end on a small stone, giving it a few minutes. And we are coming up towards 0.8 of a volt. Yay. Okay. And it's still going up, so things are still happening in there. Now, you would think a nice big surface area electrode, like this, um, would actually give us more pickup. But when I've put this on top of a couple of stones and touched the, the uh, probe to it, we're down on the millivolt range again. So, a small probe, just a piece of wire in the top of the fish pond. Let's come back to this in 10, 15 minutes and see what we're getting in terms of voltage. And then we'll try some sort of a current test. 10 minutes later, we're having a little play. Right, let's take you back to where I started from. Uh, one of the videos I saw said, make your mud battery like this, and then have another tank with your water and bubble air through it to get your oxygen. And to connect the two, make a uh, salt bridge, effectively. So a piece of cloth soaked in saturated salt, wrapped it in some plastic to stop it from drying out touches into both ends on some water and with an electrode. Okay, let's go back to this, right, and have a zero signal. Put it in there. And we're on 0.7 volts. And you notice how it always climbs. Once you connect it, it starts to climb. It's an interesting thing. I don't know what it means yet, but it means something. Right, if we then come to the water on this side, we've got the same we have on the other side, okay? Now in there, I've got what I'm hoping to use as an electrode. So we will touch it to the electrode. And now we get the little millivolt reading, so 140 millivolts. So there's something happening with this stainless steel, because when it's just straight into the water, it's coming up as something quite respectable. When it's on the electrode, it's gone. If we touch to the salt bridge, and we've got it there, and we have it on the other end, and it's there, so the salt bridge works. Um, and if I just drop my probe in the water, okay. So there's our voltage, let's switch to current. And nothing.
that is actually the zero on my machine. So there's no current flowing, even though it's now dead short through the amp meter with no load on it, so it should have plenty of current. Let's take it out, give it a minute, and I'll drop it back in again. I think. Right. Put it back on there. Back to voltage. Okay, so there's something there, but just having this across into water, there's no air pump pushing air through it. That is not generating actual usable power yet. Um, and for some reason, when you have a high, a high area electrode on this end, you get a tiny little amount. So I need to think about that. You guys can all have a think about that. And then let's see what we should be trying next.